Hi everyone! In this video tutorial, I'd like to take a look at galvanic cells, also known as voltaic cells, or more colloquially as a battery. Now these are going to run on oxidation reduction reactions, or redox reactions, which is essentially where you have electrons transfer between two species. So essentially you're going to have one thing that gives up electrons, and another thing that's going to take those electrons up. Another important point about these types of cells is that they run on spontaneous reactions. So the reaction has to be favorable. So it has to have either a negative Gibbs free energy associated with it, or which is equivalent to a positive voltage associated with it. So in this video though, I'd more like to take a look at the structure and understand how it's put together. So if we take a look at this, over here I'm going to have two separate containers to kind of really emphasize what's happening, and we can call those compartments. So in one of the compartments we're going to have the reaction be the oxidation reaction, where the electrons are lost. In the other compartment we're going to have the reduction reaction, where those electrons are gained. So what we see here is we're going to have a solution, and this solution is going to have some kind of species that's going to have a positive charge. It could be multiply positive, meaning it could be x2+, plus, x3+, plus, or just x+. Plus. And in the other case here, we're going to have another solution. In this case, it'll be y+. Plus. So now, what you're going to have then is you're going to have to connect these two, right? Because if this side's willing to give electrons up, the other side would have to be willing to take it. But the electrons would have to have a way to transport from one location to the other. So what we see is we're going to actually connect these with an electrode. Okay, so those there are our electrodes. And we're going to see that the electrons, in this case here, are going to travel from this side over here. So this, remember, is willing to give electrons up, and then this side, the electrons are going to be taken in. So that would mean that this compartment has the oxidation, and this compartment here has the reduction reaction. The name for the oxidizing compartment is the anode. And then over here, this is called our cathode. So oxidation at the anode, reduction at the cathode. So now, just a brief mention about the electrodes. Most of the time, or quite often I should say, the electrode will be the metallic form of whatever's in solution. So what I mean by that is that this here would be X and this would be Y. But let's say we have an example with iron, where let's say we're trying to go between iron 2 plus and iron 3 plus. So I want the reaction to be related to the things that are in solution. In that case, you wouldn't want an electrode that would be made of iron because it would muddy up the reaction. So oftentimes what you'll see is an electrode made of platinum. So platinum is able to conduct those electrons from one location to another, but they won't participate in the reaction. So that's one important thing to know. Okay, so now, if we think this through, we have electrons leaving the anode and traveling towards the cathode. But if electrons keep moving in that direction, we're going to see a charge pile up on this side, and that is going to mean the battery will not want to operate. So in order to keep this going, what we'll actually have here is a salt bridge. So this one here is called a salt bridge. And remember, a salt is going to be made up of an anion and a cation. So let's just say that I have something like NaCl, just for example. This is going to help to keep the reaction going because we know that the Na is actually Na+, and the Cl is Cl-. So what happens then is when the electrons move in this direction, that cation is going to move in this direction with it, balancing the charge out. And then, when that electron leaves, the chloride, or the anion, is going to move into this solution, once again balancing it out. So for every negative lost, we have a salt that can come in and fill that gap, and for every negative gained, we have a cation that can come in and once again balance that charge out. And this allows that battery to keep operating. And essentially, it's going to operate until it dies, and when it's dead, you've ultimately reached equilibrium. So those are some of the basics you want to know about the galvanic cell.